Well, if you are a parent, it is the worst hand you can be dealt. To be told that your child has a disease for which there is no cure and there isn't much time. Many families around the world are dealing with such a diagnosis, but there are some strong-willed people trying to change the outcome. Ah, uh, Christian, so much to say. An amazing, bright uh, little boy. John Rivera speaks wistfully about his son Christian, a vivacious, brilliant boy who at the age of four was diagnosed with diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, or DIPG, a lethal brain tumor that only affects children. So I already knew he had a brainstem tumor, and I already knew that the prognosis was pretty bad, but now they're letting me know that he's probably have three to nine months to live. And I look out the, the glass door, I see him on a bike, he looked perfect. And I said, that can't be, he's so happy. I just couldn't believe it, it was devastating. Because DIPG is found in the brain stem and has no defined lines, it simply can't be removed. The typical patient is any child you've seen walk in the streets of New York. Beautiful, normally developing children, anywhere from four to 12. They're energetic, they're outgoing, they're advanced. Dr. Mark Swedan is a pediatric neurosurgeon at Weill Cornell Brain and Spine Center who has dedicated 20 years of his career to finding a cure for DIPG. DIPG, for which he says the survival rate is zero. Because of the frustration, because of basically empathizing with a parent, I don't understand why there's not an option for my child. They feel that this clock is ticking, ticking very rapidly. The inevitable is going to occur, a death of that child. I'll tell you that the, the drive to do something like this is, is almost non-existent. There's absolutely no glory in it. There's absolutely no honor in it. You know what the end result is going to be. My son did live a lot longer than most of the DIPG kids live. He lived two years, two days, 18 hours and 36 minutes. Who's counting? Christian's parents founded the Christian Rivera Foundation, which funds the research and new groundbreaking clinical trials of Dr. Swedan and his team. I wanted to keep his legacy going. He was a special little boy. And um, I never wanted to hear stories about children or their loved ones suffering the way Christian and our family suffered. Um, those children stay with me in the sense that the reason this laboratory exists, the reason the individuals who work with me exist, the reason there's foundations like the Christian Rivera Foundation is because they believe that the norm is not good enough, that the status quo will not suffice from this day forward, that we want to get a cure for these children. Now, there is some good news. For the first time, there are clinical trials going on right now, and they do look promising. Funding is still the biggest obstacle because DIPG is seen by many as a battle that really can't be won. And, Michael, looking at these children, there's really no common denominator other than what a lot of the parents describe as them being very special and advanced and gifted in some way. But it's all races. It's all countries. It's all over the world. Very small amounts. And Dr. Sway Dan says that as a pediatric brain surgeon, the biggest reward that you can receive when you remove a brain tumor to get that college graduation photo, sure. that wedding photo, of course. and he wants that. And the difficulty, it seems to be that you can't get funding until you can show there's hope, but you can't show there's hope until you get the funding. Exactly, and that's where we are right now. And tonight, the Christian Rivera Foundation is having a gala. I will be there, and uh, they're hoping to raise a lot of that's money. That's great, and you're doing great work with them, too. No, thank you. They're a great organization.